An SCG is a device that converts the energy around you, that's everywhere, into useful energy, what we call electricity. The generator is a magnetic device that is uh, totally magnetic. It is its own prime mover. It will self-start and continue to run, and as far as we know, we can say never stop. We have something here that needs to be investigated, and really that's my role. I am a technical investigator of the SCG. The difference is I'm not willing to sit and just make an opinion. I'm going to make it happen. The generator is approximately two foot in diameter by about eight inches high, and it can be put in the home to power your, your home. It can be put in your automobile to power your automobile. And many of the uh, third world countries have no means of generating electricity. These units could be put in there and power whole communities. You really have to take a look at each individual component and function. And when you step back, you say, wow, this thing works. There's too much for it. To, uh, there's too many facets involved not to be something viable. For over 60 years, John Searle has tried to give to the world a new kind of energy system one that would free mankind from the burdens of oil and fossil fuels. Cleaning up this planet is going to be a big job. If we're going to get the climate back to what we want, a lot of work will be done. But one thing is certain, you need energy. That's important. So relatively speaking, it is positive here, negative out here, air is ionized, current draws in the back of the center, and you have completed the circuit. This is Amy, just one of an uncountable number of negatively charged electrons seeking a positive destination. She finds the positively charged neodymium core irresistible and enters the Searle converter device, becoming part of an enormous reservoir of electrons. Inside the neodymium, Amy meets Neo, an electron from the neodymium core. These electrons are drawn to the powerful magnetic flux line penetrating the four layers in the Searle design. They join together, forming a boson pair, as they spin around the magnetic force, releasing them on their pathway to freedom. As they enter the gate layer, they are compressed, feeling pressure to exit the system. At the same time, they are pulled and accelerated by the magnetic layer. Their energy continues to increase, racing through the emitter layer, joining trillions of other boson pairs that form the eddy current on the surface of plate one. The boson pair is captured by the roller and blasted into the positively charged neodymium core of the second stage plate, repeating the activity into the third stage of the Searle device. With tremendous energy, Amy and Neo are hurled forcefully into standard coils, where they are collected in the same manner as any generator of electricity. Nothing is created or destroyed. The circuit is complete. As the rollers move, they provoke electrons to migrate through the four layers of the plate. From the neodymium core, through the gate layer, the magnetic layer, and the emitter or copper layer. This activity repeats through the rollers and the plates. Unlike conventional generators, the electrons will be moving at extremely high velocity. Conventional currents are slow currents, and they build up heat. The more current you draw, the more heat you get. This system is the opposite. The more current you draw, the colder it gets, for this reason. At the quantum level, the electrons are riding the magnetic field not hitting the lattice of the atoms. The electrons find their path between atoms undisturbed, so they accelerate to higher and higher speeds. The evidence is right here on this table. We'll be doing more demonstrations in the future. I remember, this plate don't have low voltage on it, yet some energy must come across here to this coil, so that the electrons come across the back of the roller to here. We have proved here that there's no electric 
supplied by that rain to make those rollers with his heart to be the thermal tension of the atom. That makes them move. I'd like to show the mathematics we use. The law of the square says there are two prime states in everything in the universe and they're opposites. Now what I got to do is make sure that each line comes to the same value. Simple, isn't it? Yeah. Do you agree? I agree.